Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Rob with On The Fence Movie Reviews and The Nights of Horror, here to bring to you another episode of Slashback Friday. Now in this episode of Slashback Friday, I'm going to review a movie that came out in 2016, and it is simply titled Blair Witch. Now Blair Witch is a sequel to The Blair Witch Project that came out in 1999. There is a Blair Witch Project 2 that we do not speak of, so mum's the word. So Blair Witch uh, follows James, who is the, I believe, younger brother of Heather, who is the lead actress in... Uh, the first movie who, you know, her and her crew disappear in the forest. And so James has been searching for his sister, Heather, for years, you know, looking on the internet, trying to find out what goes on there. And I believe it's Burkittsville. So he comes across this video on the internet uh, where, you know, the, this couple had posted it. They say they claim that they found it near the forest. And so James and his friends get in contact with this couple. They meet up and decide we're going to go into the forest and we're going to find out what happened to James's sister, Heather. So let me stop right there and just say, I'm going to give, there might be some tiny things that could you consider spoilers, some little tiny spoilers. If you have not seen the Blair Witch Project or the Blair Witch or Blair Witch. Um, so just fair warning, I'm not going to ruin the whole movie for you or ruin the ending or anything like that. Um, just little tiny spoilers I, I, I might need to, you know, kind of do this review. So, uh, James has, it's, is his friends. He has the, you know, this couple and who, uh, the guy has been his lifelong friend, you know, since they were kids, they've actually, you know, they talked about it in the movie where they went and looked for Heather, try and find her when they were younger. And then his friend who is kind of documenting the trip, who actually brings a bunch of cameras. They have these little things. They look like Bluetooth headsets, but their cameras attached. She has a drone camera. You know, everyone's got one of these little cameras and then, you know, she's carrying a camera herself. So she's kind of documenting the trip. Um, she's relatively new to the group. So you kind of get that, that feeling you know, at the very beginning where they're, you know, kind of at, you know, kind of questioning her bringing these cameras and, and all so much. And, you know, what's, what's her purpose there and so they meet up with this couple uh who posted the video footage of james who he thinks he sees his sister in this footage and he wants to go check it out so they all get together they go into the forest they camp there and stuff starts to happen now i'm gonna stop right there and just tell you what i liked and did not like about this movie um let me just say this: There are a lot of jump scares, and I'm not a, I'm not a, against jump scares, but I'm not the biggest fan if you use them repeatedly, over and over. It just it feels cheap, and they use a few too many jump scares in this movie. Uh, I one scene in particular, you know, the, one of the pre people come out of the tent, and then all of a sudden, you know, another person like just comes up like, "What was that?" It's like. You know, out of nowhere, it's like, you're right next to them. Why would you sneak up on your friend who's, you know, something's going on. Why would you sneak up on them and and scare them even more? So, little things like that. There's a lot of those jump scares in this movie. Uh, but with saying that, the way they use the forest. I feel like in the Blair Witch Project, um, there the forest felt very open. It, it didn't feel like a forest. It just kind of felt woodsy. In this, the forest feels very dense, very uh, enclosed. You feel like you're trapped as you're even you know, as you're as they're walking through with the cameras. You felt very trapped. And and with saying that and mentioning the cameras, you have a perspective from everyone's view pretty much because they're all wearing these little cameras. And I like that because it gives you you know the first movie they had I think they had two cameras, and if. That made it feel suspenseful because you were just following these three characters. But in this movie, I believe there's four, five, there's six characters in this movie. And using all these cameras lets you kind of go along with each one of them to see what they're doing and what they're going through. So I like that. And then they have a drone camera, which was a good idea and thought, but I don't think they used it that well because they only used it for a couple shots. And then, you know, something happens to the drone and then, you know, that's kind of pretty much it. So... 
mm, with the drone. I, I like the idea of having all the cameras. I like the idea of the drone camera, but they don't, in my opinion, don't use it to its fullest ability of what they could have possibly used it for more creatively, I would say. But so in saying that, the the sound in this movie it's very like you know the the crinkling of the forest floor the the wind in the trees i thought that was very it was very well done and it it brings that suspense factor with it because you you're hearing things over here you're hearing things over here and it 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 makes you feel like you like you're like I need to hold on to my chair. Something's gonna happen. Sometimes something does happen, like a jump scare, and sometimes uh, it's just it it's just kind of you're setting a tone for the movie. So I did like that. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, they do expand on the lore of the Blair Witch. So you know certain things from the first movie play out in this movie. And they're expanding why why the Blair Witch this and what happened and why certain care you know why certain things in in the tales are this way and that way. So they have this conversation uh, throughout you know kind of the beginning of this movie and kind of expanding on the lore of the Blair Witch, which I which I thought was really cool because I like the Blair Witch project and I thought like the whole you know just the lore of the Blair Witch and the stories that you know when they were doing the documentary. The stories that the people were telling, I thought they were interesting, and they kind of again expand on that in this movie. Now, here's the thing: this movie is pretty much beat for beat as the Blair Witch Project, with some some you know tweaks here and there to kind of switch it up a little bit. But I would say the last ten to fifteen minutes of this movie are very very suspenseful very high intense and you're just like go 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 and it's very nail biting but it's also very similar to the Blair Witch Project where once they get to that house in the Blair Witch Project you know running around with a camera and you know yelling and and you know Josh and and you know kind of going back and forth it's very much this you get that you know very much intense that way in this movie, the Blair Witch or Blair Witch, with twists and different, like I said, they expand on different things, different lore, or the lore of the Blair Witch. So I thought it was really cool. The, like this movie was here, you know, not saying bad or good or anything, but it was here. And then when you get to that last 15 minutes, what this is what it does, at least for me. And I thought it was smart and cool. Is it brings the movie up, but then it also brings the Blair Witch Project up. So the last, like I said, the last 15 minutes of this movie, last 10 minutes of this movie, it brings it up, it expands so much more. So then you start to look at the whole movie differently and then you start to look at the Blair Witch Project differently. So to me, that's a good thing. I really liked it and it makes you want to go back and watch the Blair Witch Project. So, and in saying all that, am I going to stay on the fence or am I going to get off the fence? Well, if you've seen the Blair Witch Project and you have not seen Blair Witch, I would say get off the fence and check it out because all it does is it enhances the Blair Witch Project. And to a certain extent, I would say the last part of this movie brings this movie up, uh, Blair Witch, bring this movie up. Uh, so you take that for, you know, take that as, as, as you will. Um, if you've not seen either one of these movies and they don't interest you or you just weren't a fan of the Blair Witch Project, I would say go ahead and, and just stay on the fence because um, it's not the exact same movie. It follows the same beat patterns um, with minor minor tweaks here and there. But, you know, if so, again, if you've seen the Blair Witch Project, get off the fence, check out Blair Witch. If you're really not interested in uh, the Blair Witch Project or it was just like, yeah, I seen it, it was whatever, you probably won't be a fan of the uh, of Blair Witch. So I would say stay on the fence. But anyways, in saying all that, I am Rob. This has been another episode of Slashback Friday with the Knights of Horror and On the Fence Movie Reviews. If you've uh, enjoyed this video, hit that like button because that definitely helps us. If you're not subscribed to either On the Fence Movie Reviews or the Knights of Horror, please subscribe because we truly do appreciate the support. And we thank you for subscribing because I know you're going to subscribe. So 
You can find us on our social medias too, uh, the Knights of Horror and on the Fence Movie Reviews on Instagram, and I believe the Knights of Horror has a Twitter. So go ahead and go over there, give us a follow, and uh, we will we would truly in- uh, appreciate that. And remember, don't trust creepy people who post creepy videos online.